everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Ria. I currently work as a software engineer at Microsoft and today we will be discussing about another very interesting topic. We will talk about the difference between an on-site engineer and a remote engineer. We will also talk about the pros and cons of working as a remote engineer as well as an on-site engineer as well. With time, I think um, remote engineering as a concept and as a way of working and as a lifestyle is becoming quite popular and it is important that we talk about it because nowadays many people when they're even applying to jobs if the job description asks you to be remote or it asks you to be in office may plays a very major role in what the expectation of a job as well and it really helps you to take a call whether you want to opt for that organization or not so for that it's important that you know very clearly the differences between working in these two different environments and what are the advantages and disadvantages that comes along with it so without wasting any time let's quickly get started but before that if you've not subscribed to the channel yet please go ahead and subscribe and ring that bell icon as well to, for you to get all the important updates so what we'll do is first we will talk about remote work setup or remote engineering as a lifestyle there are different pros and cons to it let's first talk about the advantages of working as a remote engineer the first advantage is the biggest advantage also which is flexibility right you don't you're not binded to any work schedules you're not binded to any particular working hours you're free to decide your work environment you're free to decide your working hours as well and that gives you a lot of flexibility and sometimes really good work-life balance as well as you can really decide your own times and you are not binded by the company timings as well access to global companies now since you're actually working remotely you don't have to just apply to companies which are near you or within your reach as well right you can actually apply to company you're currently in india but you want to work for a company which is in the us canada europe right because you're working remotely and all the employees of the companies are essentially working remotely you can actually work for these companies as well they have a lot of employees working remotely all over the world right so these people you get to interact with who are working in different states different countries they have a different lifestyle you get to know about them so that actually adds a lot of diversity in the company Third point and another very major point is about cost savings, right? Because you're working remotely, you do not have to go to the office. You save a lot of commute time. Along with that, you save a lot of time also, right? If you're working in a place or if you're working from home, usually it takes a lot of time to do the office commute if you're, not, if you're living a little far, right? Sometimes it takes two hours to just go and two hours to come back, right? So you save a lot of time over there, right? And you can work from the safe heaven of your home and you do not have to spend a lot also in traveling. Usually remote companies try to keep a offsite where all the employees come to a common location, meet all the team members, right? And they try to just get to know each other a little better and try to compensate for the fact that they're not seeing their team members quite frequently. And then they try to basically make an environment, have some fun for about two, three days, and then everyone goes back to their own locations as well. So yes, if you're working remotely, you do get the benefit of enjoying the offsite uh, enjoyments and offsite locations as well. Now that we have seen what exactly are advantages of working remotely, we will also talk a little bit about the disadvantages, right? We know that it gives you a lot of flexibility, it saves you a lot of money as well, but it all comes with a cost also. First is going to be the communication barrier, right? If you have to interact with your team member, you cannot just go to their desk and, you know, clarify any questions you have. You have to rely on digital tools only, right? You have to make sure that you set up a relevant time, a relevant meeting with that folk, and it is obviously has to be in a simultaneous uh, time zone as well which matches yours and which matches their working time zone as well so sometimes communication can be a little difficult and you have to over communicate as well right because you're not uh, working with that person face to face it can lead to a lot of miscommunication also so you have to over communicate everything digital tools like mails calls right and video calls these are the only factors that you have to rely on to order and to make a efficient communication even building strong relationships with your team members can be a little challenging in the sense as well. Again, you're relying on digital tools only to get all these things sort of work done. Now, when you're actually working remotely, it's very important to be self-motivated and to be self-disciplined as well. You have to be quite disciplined. You have to make a proper schedule for yourself and you have to make sure that you adhere to that schedule also. 
Now that we know what remote engineering is and what are the pros and cons with it, let's actually talk about what is the lifestyle and what exactly uh, pros and cons comes with when you're working as an on-site engineer. Now, first, an on-site engineer means that you have to go to the office regularly. Either it could be a hybrid culture where you have to go to the office three days a week or two days a week, right? Or it could also mean that you have to go to the office regularly. Let's first talk about the pros of going to office and being an on-site engineer. The first and the very important factor is collaboration, right? When you're working uh, in a location which is in the office and in a physical workspace, you get to interact face-to-face -face all your team members, right? You can have a good communication cycle. You can just simply walk up to the desk of your colleague, clarify all your doubts, you know, and take feedback quite uh, frequently also in order to work more effectively and slightly be more productive as well. Second point, you get to thoroughly enjoy the company culture, right? When you're uh, when you're actually on site, you're going to the office regularly, you're able to take a part in a lot of activities, some fun sessions that are happening, right? And you really get to understand what your company is, what your company's mission is, what the sense of culture is, how are they promoting lots of initiatives that I have. And you know, you get to enjoy a lot, you get a you, you meet a bunch of other people, you make some new friends, you understand new perspective, and that really helps in the overall growth of an individual also. Third point is going to be immediate feedback. Now, when you're working in the same location and you have face-to-face -face interactions, it actually allows for very less miscommunications, right? You can actively seek feedback on your work as well, and you can improve accordingly as well. Your way or your the time that it takes to have a meeting or interact with other fellows also is considerably low, and you get to and you're able to resolve your queries much faster as well. Let's also talk about some of the disadvantages and some of the cons as well that comes with it. Personally, for me, one of the biggest cons that comes with it is going to be the commute stress, right? If you live in metropolitan cities like Delhi, Bangalore, Mumbai, Pune, right? It adds a lot of commute stress. You have to travel at least sometimes one and a half hour, two hours, one way to reach to your office. And again, at that much time also takes to come back home as well. Right. That takes up a lot of your energy. You feel very exhausted as well. Right. And it takes up a lot of time, money and a lot of factors come into play. Right. So remember that if you opt for an on-site engineering position, you will have to go to all you will have to go to the offices and the cost that comes with it, if it is not being bared by the company, can also be substantial as well. Second disadvantage is going to be limited flexibility. You're actually going to work from the office. You don't have a lot of say in your work hours as well as location. So if you're living in, let's say, a tier three city or a tier two city and the office is in a tier one city, you will first of all have to migrate to that particular city where your office physical workspace is. And along with that, you will also not have a lot of say in what the working hours are, right? So if you're all the team members in your company are attending office from 10 to six or 10 to seven, more or less, you would also be opting for the same same times as well and you would not really be able to have a lot of space of movement in that time of working that you have. Now, with the pandemic, I think that remote engineering is something that has gotten very popular. Before the pandemic, I never really saw companies going a lot for remote uh, culture, except for some global and companies who by default were remote from the start. But now I think big tech companies also are sort of going in the direction of um, remote work culture as well. Whereas there are some companies who have realized that their productivity more comes from the fact of people actually coming to the office. So you will find ample opportunities in both the areas as well. You can take the you can take your call based on what preferences are. I hope this video helps you to get a good segregation on what different points are there and what different aspect comes with both of these um, lifestyles and you are able to take a decision on that. If you find this video useful, please make sure you like the video as well and please stay tuned for the next videos also. Bye!